Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight and I wanted to make my own personal contribution to the topic that is the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius. Now, anybody who is into or interested in astrology is more than likely going to be aware of this um, as it is one of the biggest astrological events of 2024. And we're just talking about Pluto shifting in to zero degrees of Aquarius, which is happening on Saturday, the 20th of January. And um, it's the second time that Pluto has gone into Aquarius. Um, it was in there briefly last year. Pluto will stay in this sign until September and then um, move back in in November and then stays in Aquarius for the next 20 years or so. Now, because Pluto is a slow moving planet, it's one of our outer planets and um, it has, it's, it's quite powerful. It has a big Im influence on us energetically. Um, but because it's slow moving, it only changes signs um, a few times in our lifetime, spending about 20 years in each sign on average. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at, um, I don't know, an average lifespan, I don't know, let's say take 80 years, you're only going to have um, experience of effectively four, maybe five um, signs, five Pluto transits. So it is a big deal. Now, Pluto is all about transformation. It is about um, delving deep into and uncovering what has been hidden so that um, the light can move in and deep healing and transformation can occur. It's also about power and how we use power and how we work with power, um, among other things. So it's a really interesting planet. Many people fear Pluto, but ultimately um, Pluto is there to work for our greatest good, although it's not always um, a comfortable journey, shall we say. Um, but it is, so it's happening on Saturday. What is significant um, with this particular ingress is that the sun is moving into Aquarius on the same day. So Pluto and the Sun will meet at 29 degrees, 59 minutes of Capricorn. And then the Sun will move into zero Aquarius. And a few hours later, Pluto follows suit. So it's like the Sun is, um, it's it, it feels like a partnership, but the Sun is lighting the way, leading the way um, and shining a light, being the brightest luminary in the chart. So shining a light, a spotlight, um, so that Pluto can then follow suit. So this adds a lot of power and oomph um, and magic to this ingress, which is already a big deal because it happens so rarely. Um, and really it is, it's going to create a big shift in the energy. It is almost like the changing of the guard um, in terms of the energy shifting because um, the difference between Capricorn and Aquarius is really significant. Um, and it feels like um, kind of a rite of passage if you like, because um, with Capricorn being, you know, the tra traditionally rules the 10th house at the top of the chart. So we've worked through all of Capricorn and um, it's not been particularly easy. Um, but it's like we've, you know, we're pretty much there now. We're going to have to go just dip back, back in in um, September through November later on this year. But it is it is it's it's a big shift. Um, so as um, we have this um, new sign to work with, we're going to notice the shift in energy. Um, Aquarius is an air sign, it is fixed air, but it is going to be um, sort of bringing us very much into our minds. Um, air is very speedy, um, it's all about information, it's light, it's energy, um, it's communication and it's sort of thoughts and words. So we're going to really feel that things are um, speeding up and it's going to be quite difficult to, you know, once this energy sort of gathers momentum, it's going to be quite difficult to make it stop <laughs> effectively. But um, before we talk about um, Pluto in Aquarius, I just wanted um, to highlight, um, because I'm a galactic astrologer, there's a really interesting um, fixed star alignment 
which is actually um, at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Well, no, sorry, it's at 29 degrees of Cancer. But because Cancer opposes Capricorn, we have an opposition. And this is the Alpha Star in a constellation called Monoceros. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but it is the constellation of the Unicorn. Now, um, I've been learning a lot. This is a new um, star for me, but I've been learning a lot about the unicorns, what um, is the symbology um, and the energy of the unicorn. And um, because it feels to me as the Sun and Pluto are going to conjoin at this 29 um, degree point, the final um, minutes of 29 degrees. Um, it's also activating through an opposition this beautiful unicorn energy um, and it feels as if because it's an opposition um, there is sort of there is distance there but it feels like we have um, the support um, of these magical beings sort of overlooking if you like watching over um, almost like a kind of parental, I guess, um, viewpoint, but sort of leading, holding space and leading the way for this really big transit and transition to take place. And of course, you know, the unicorn represents peace, unity. It's a very magical creature and um, deep healing, very heart based and also play and having fun. Sort of it really lightens up the energy. Um, and the other thing that I've sort of been reflecting on a lot of the past, well, fortnight um, in the lead up to this event um, is the fact that um, the unicorn is obviously very closely linked to rainbow energy. And that's been coming through really strongly for me. Um, rainbows being, um, you know, when you have the refraction of light through droplets of water and it creates um, this beautiful arc of light with all the colours and really what that represents because um, it feels like this rainbow energy and the unicorn energy is sort of creating this bridge between um, the old and the new. So the Capricorn um, energy that we are sort of moving on from now into this beautiful new Aquarian um, signature that we are going to be working with for the, some time to come. Um, the rainbow being very protective, if you think of it, it always appears an, as an arc over, grounding and um, sort of anchored at both sides. But the significance of the rainbow being that um, it is made up of individual unique colours and if there's one missing it isn't it, it can't be a rainbow so it's sort of for me it represents the Aquarian um, sort of signature and um, ethos in that with the Aquarian energy everybody has a unique part to play a unique gift a unique role a unique energy signature and we need to find a way to bring all those together to sort of help and support the greater good and to become part of the collective, to find that unity. The rainbow is all about unity um, and to find, you know, instead of seeing um, people or th things are different, different beliefs, different ways, different cultures, whatever it is, instead of seeing that as some sort of threat and something to fear, actually realising that there is such a gift and such beauty in it and how can we use that to our advantage rather than um, sort of turning against it, which is maybe what has happened in the past. So it's really um, beautiful symbolism, you know, to sort of to know that that um, sort of that magical energy is kind of helping us and, sh and shifting us and supporting us in this massive transition. And um, the other sort of interesting um, connection that has been coming through for me is um, the connection with Lemuria, because um, of course, unicorns were um, part of Lemuria. They are said to have roamed freely and um, much higher um, vibration and frequency in Lemuria. But it feels like because Pluto uncovers um, and reveals what has been um, um, sort of kept hidden or suppressed um, or covered up, um, as we are moving into this more um, Aquarian age, 
with the unicorn and the rainbow energy. It feels to me that there's going to be a lot more um, sort of collective remembering of the Lemurian times because many of us who are incarnated here now have had past lives on Lemuria and to um, to a large extent you know the the, the fifth dimension frequency that was in Lemuria what, or the, what was that was Lemuria is something that we are trying to bring back now and um, so it just felt that you know there is the potential here um, for that to happen um, I'm not entirely sure where I've got this but in one of my folders I have actually written some um, degree markers for um, Lemurian connections and I have actually got zero percent um, zero degrees of Aquarius written down so Fortunately, I haven't written the source of that, um, but if that is the case, then this is absolutely um, beautifully, divinely um, relevant. Because, of course, as Pluto moves in with the sun, um, Pluto is about uncovering um, what has been hidden. So, of course, you know, for many of us, Lemuria is something that, um, you know, we don't necessarily connect to but I feel that there may be a lot more sort of awakening and remembering um sort of taking place now as with any um planet or point at the zero degree of any sign because it is the zero degree it is brand new it's fresh so that means there is very little experience of the energy so it can be quite chaotic um if you think of you know a child sort of learning to walk you know that they're, they're going to fall over a lot and um, that they're, they're not established but there there's great excitement and great enthusiasm you know what's and because of the potential so this is kind of the energy that we're pr probably going to be dealing with for this year um you know we know there's something new but we haven't quite got to grips with it so we can expect a little bit well um, well, certainly a lot of turmoil, but in terms of um, sort of, yeah, not quite um, mastering, certainly nowhere near mastering the Aquarian energy from the Pluto perspective. Um, what is also interesting from a galactic astrology point of view is that um, Pluto and the Sun are both going to conjoin or conjunct Aladfar in the Lyran star system. So um, this um, is a star, the Lyra star system is... Um, a constellation that is linked to our human galactic heritage and history and lineage um, and Aladfar is one of the stars in this system and it um, sort of falls at zero degrees of Aquarius so the energy of Aladfar is going to be um, activated by this transit and we will be working with this energy for um, well for most of 2024 certainly through Pluto and again, you know, it's really interesting when you sort of look at some of the um, energies that are associated with Aladvar. It um, is one of the stars that um, where there was um, war and destruction. So a lot of souls who have had incarnations there are carrying the trauma um, and grief and wounding um, and certainly the wound of separation um, within them at a cellular memory. Um, so again, it feels that with Pluto moving across this fixed star, there is the potential for this trauma to be revealed, to be unearthed, and that is so that it can be healed. Um, other energies that we associate with added far are um, very much strong um, warrior military energy, um, very protective um, like I said, it's it's quite masculine, but there's also a real calling to um, come back to nature, to simplify and to heal. Um, and what is interesting, so much that's interesting, is that because um, Pluto, sorry, Aquarian, Aquarius's ruling planet is Uranus, which is the planet of awakening, um, often kind of behaves like a thunderbolt so you know comes out of nowhere the energy comes out of nowhere strikes fast it's swift it's quick and um you know it does its work but again it just feels like there is this opportunity with Pluto moving into um Uranus's Uranus's ruling sign 
that, you know, there is a potential for very um, swift and um, almost unexpected awakening, remembering um, and, and deep healing. And it's something, you know, whereas for a lot of people, it's taken years and lifetimes to um to do the healing to face the shadow to heal the wounds and to work with um the trauma it feels like as pluto moves through aquarius is going to be this beautiful opportunity to just cut through almost all of that and get to the core and um, do the healing so that we can move forward and because obviously once we face the shadow and face the wounds um, and heal them that then creates more light and we can move forward and get on with the ascension process so um there is another fixed star um which is at two degrees of Aquarius and that is Altair in the um Aquila constellation Aquila being the eagle and again um you know the sun will conjoin with Altair next week on the 22nd of January. Pluto is going to take slightly longer to get there, but it, it will be working with that energy. And the Eagle Altair brings um, a real sort of um, signature of strength, of nobility. Um, there is um, the sovereignty comes through and um, the ability to rise up and see the bigger picture see the whole landscape see things from a completely different point of view um altair is very bold it's very courageous and um, there's a real sort of strong inner power that comes through um and there's also a real drive to speak the truth to fight for injustice and to um sort of lend support so that we can rise and ascend and sort of bring our consciousness up to where it needs to be to help us ascend. So again, that conjunction and that energy is also being activated and it's not hard to see how that's going to really serve us and support us um, and help us move forward with speed, but also with a real sort of nobility and strength and gravitas as well as kind of the sense that I get with that fixed star um so all in all it is um it's a really exciting time it's something that you know as astrologers we've been looking forward to because we can see the potential with the Aquarian energy stepping up you know there's going to be a lot more um focus on sort of um rather than the power coming from the top down like it has been in the patriarchal sort of system that we've been so used to it's going to be much more grassroots working together you know where um there are systems and structures and um you know things that we do that aren't for the greater good and for the collective they're going to start to collapse and new things will be brought in new ways will be brought in that support humanity in a much um, better way we're going to see huge leaps and bounds in technology in science um and also and um, pluto and aquarius is going to open up our minds to the galactic and um, because aquarius being ruled by Uranus is very galactic sign. So, you know, it feels to me that there's a potential again for a lot of things that have been covered up to be exposed, to be revealed, but also for us to sort of um, look inside and start to see how we fit into the bigger picture. So when we're talking about the collective, we're not just talking about everybody who lives in this world, we're talking about the greater collective and how we fit in to the bigger picture to you know to the universe the cosmos and um and what you know potential that opens up so um yeah very exciting times but for the star seeds among us um especially if you've got you know anything at 29 capricorn zero to two degrees of aquarius um it is particularly um, potent time for you, but just for everybody, really the message that I've been getting is that it is very much time for us to step fully into our bodies so that we can activate the light, so that we can be the channel for the new energies, um, start to embrace our gifts and realise that actually, you know, we don't need to hide away anymore and what we have 
come here to do and what we're, what we're bringing to the table is actually a really important piece of the bigger picture. And like the rainbow, you know, every colour has its place. Um, and so like, you know, all of us, we all have something that um, we are here to do and something to contribute. And so it is about remembering that we're magical, that we have the power to change our reality and our world. And um, that, you know, it's important just to be you because at the end of the day, you know, um, it is about being authentic and being you. And we've got this beautiful full moon um, five days after in Leo, which is all about heart. It's about courage. It's about expressing who you are, embracing who you are. Um, so again, you know, as part of the tribe, the community, the greater collective, but sort of really coming into touch with the true essence of you and lighting that up and setting that sort of activating that power and that energy. Um, so let's see where it takes us. Um, and um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm sure I'll be back soon with lots more, but for now I will leave you. So thank you. Bye-bye.